So today we're going to look at the estimating slope of line of best fit exercise. Um, in this exercise, you, we're going to be asked to be put together what we've just learned about the line of best fit and estimating its slope from what we've learned before. Now, um, if we if we read these, we can we can certainly read the question that goes along with this. Generally, the data gives you enough to go by, but let's uh, let's go through and read the question. So Jacob distributed a survey to his fellow students, asking them how many hours they spent on the internet in the past day. He also asked them to rate their mood on a scale from 0 to 10, with 10 being the happiest. So he's collecting bivariate data here, um, and he's, he's asking, well, what's the slope? Um, he's asking what the slope, the average change in mood rating associated with a one-hour increase in hours online. So the more time you spend online, what's your, what's your, what, uh, what, what's going to happen to your mood as a result? As we can see here, the mood rating goes down the longer you spend, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, all the research shows that. Uh, we've been given four possible answers, and what we're going to do here is we're going to eyeball the line of best fit based on two points. So two points that I like, I, I'd like to choose right here. I'd like to say, um, I think we've got, we've got a couple of points we can use here. I think um, two of the better points we have right here are probably this point right here and this point right down here. That should give us a reasonable line through the center of the data. Okay, so I've got 1.56, say, that's close enough to 6 that I can call it 6, so let's choose 1.56. Right, so I've got 1.56 is one of my points. It's a strange looking one. 1.56 and the other point so that was this point right here the other point I think follows the data best is this one right here I've got 3.54 is my other point so I've got 3.54 as well so I've got two points here and the reason why I've selected two points is because we're being asked to estimate the slope okay well the slope is given of course by two points on the line. You can give two points on the line and get the slope. And to do that, we're going to recall our slope formula. M is the change in y, so that's y2 minus y1 over the change in x. That's x2 minus x1. Well, what's x, what's, uh, x1, y1? What's x2, x2, y2? So, well, we, let's go by the x values here. Um, this is my x value, of course. This is my y values. Um, and usually you choose the lower x value as being your first point and the higher x value being your second point. And that's going to give you a nice simple slope. So y2 minus y1 is 4 minus 6. x2 minus x1 is 3.5 minus 1.5. Okay. So what we have here is we have 4 minus 6, well that's easy, that's negative 2. And 3.5 minus 1.5, well that's equal to, oh look at that, that's equal to positive 2. And negative 2 over positive 2 is of course negative 1. So that's going to give us this slope of negative 1 right here. Okay, let's take a look at a couple more. Now the plot below shows the relationship between the age of drivers and the number of car accidents per 100 drivers in the year 2009. Um, which of the following are the best, is the best estimate of the average change in the number of accidents associated with a one-year increase in age? What happens as you get older? Does your rate of accidents get smaller? And yes, it does. Look, accidents per 100 drivers, the older you get, the lower that, that number is. There's a couple of outliers here as well, but in general, this is lower. So we're going to have to choose two points that we feel fits this data best. And uh, I think if we're looking down along here, it seems these three points are the are the main um, the main part of the data. You've got outliers here. You've got a couple of outliers here. So you could probably come right down through um, right down through the middle right here. So we could probably select these two points 
and be reasonably satisfied that this actually fits our line best. We chose those this, these two points there, the kind of most central points. Uh, they are giving a slightly different slope, I think, than, than they should. Um, perhaps even if we chose this point here and this point here might actually work best for us. Um, though we could choose the two on either either side, that might might even work well as well. But um, let's choose these two right here and see how that does for us. So the first point is the point 1819. Point 1819. Um, so we're going to write that over here. The point 1819. And the second point I'm going to choose all the way down here. The point. 2411. So the point 2411 as well. And let's see what we've got. Okay, so x value, y value, first point, second point, uh, slope m is equal to the change in y over the change in x. So let's let it take a look at this. y2 minus y1 is a uh, 11 minus 19 and x2 minus x1 is 24 minus 18 so we've got so right here 11 minus 19 is negative 8 24 minus 18 is 6 so we've got negative 8 over 6 that'll simplify to negative 4 over 3 which we don't quite have anything that is, is, is perfectly close to negative 4 over 3. We've got both of these here, negative 3 over 2, negative 7 over 2 um, are, are both what we're looking at. But we note, we note that negative 7 over 2 is, is, uh, is several times larger than negative 3 over 2. Negative three over two is the only number that we have that is greater than that is smaller than negative one, but greater than negative two. So we're going to go with negative three over two, and be reasonably satisfied that it it, it, it fits the data. Let's take a look at one more. So Jacob distributed a survey to his fellow students, asking how many t how many hours they spent playing sports in the past day. He also asked them to rate their mood on the scale of. 0 to 10, with 10 being the happiest. And once again, we're being asked to find the slope. As you might imagine, the difference between internet and sports are huge. It has a different, a, a different effect on the body, and the longer you spend playing sports, the happier you get versus um, internet, which goes the other way. So let's take a look at this data here. Pick two points out of this. I like this point here. 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5, 5.5. 5. 0.5, 5.5 is a point I'm going to choose. So I'm going to write that right up here to start with. 0 0.5, 5.5. There is one point. 0 0.5, 5.5. I'm looking at this point right here. And the other point I'd like to choose maybe is, uh, let's say, this top point up here, 3.9.5. 3, 3, That's not going to work very nicely for me. Let's go with this point here, 2.5, 8.5 is probably better. 2.5, 8.5. So I'm being careful to select points that when I subtract them from, from one another are going to give me whole numbers. So that is just the one thing to... Uh, to maybe bear in mind while you're doing this. It's not always going to be possible, but it is going to make your life a little bit easier if you do that. Okay, so I can see here y2, so the slope m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and therefore that's y2 minus y1 is 8.5 minus 5.5 over 2.5 minus 0 0.5, so 2.5 minus 0 0.5. So we can see here the 0.5s are going to work themselves out. So this is going to give us 8.5 8 minus 5.5 is 3. 2.5 minus 0 0.5 gives us 2. So 3 over 2 is what we're looking at. And we know 3 over 2 
is 1.5. Okay, so all we're doing here is estimating a line of best fit, choosing, choosing two points that we feel fit that line well, and then applying our slope formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to calculate the slope of the line of best fit based on our estimate. So give that a try, let me know how you get on, and we'll move on from there.